Hello Ford truck folks, Bob Ingram here working on my first uh, Ford truck. It's a 48 and uh, needed quite a bit of work. I'm still, it's a work in progress. Uh, one thing that I uh, really relied on is YouTube videos helping me out, figuring things out. But I wasn't able to find one on assembling all the door components, including the rubbers and the windows and the re regulators and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I kind of struggled doing the first one. Uh, and uh, I figured I'd just record what I did on the second one. It may or may not be the best method, but it worked for me. And I figured I'd record it and get comments and get folks to, uh, to help out where they can. So here's the video. I'm gonna start by removing the door handle here. There's pin right in here. Need to locate it. Got my punch in there, and then I can press down on this side to let the pin out. Just tap on it, and there comes the pin. That's it. That's all it takes to remove the door handle. Now I'm gonna remove the uh, regulator, the door handle regulator. Five screws, one, two, three, four, five, and then two over here, six, seven. And I'm gonna replace all those screws with uh, stainless steel. Okay, like I said, just pull it out. It's hung up on the window channel. So why did I pull this out? That rattle right there. This bushing right here gets worn and then you get this rattle. So what I'm going to do is take this bushing out here. I'm going to make one out of brass and slide it in there. This obviously at one point was riveted and that's broken. It's the first I've seen that. So I'm going to, uh, to work on that and get that tighter so it doesn't rattle. And we'll get rid of that noise. Okay. Okay, so as I dug into it, I realized this bushing isn't broken like the last one was. It's just worn, it's pretty thin, and there's a big gap there. So I can actually just use a piece of brass to slide underneath there to reinforce that a bit. So I'm gonna take this and bend a 90 degree on one end. Slide it in here and then bend 90 degree on this end, like that. And there we go, no more rattle in that. Now I'm gonna go through with a tap and chase all these threads down to make sure they're all nice and clean in there. They're pretty rusty right now, so I think uh, chasing them down will uh, will help out a lot putting it back together again. I'm not going to bore you with, uh, with me chasing out all these holes, but uh, it's just real simple. I just have a 1224 tap. I'm just going to run it through just like that one time real quick. Okay, so now I got the gloves on because I'm going to be greasing this. So I just want to get a light layer of grease all over everything in here so it'll work smoothly. On the spring to keep it from rusting anymore.
And what I did in video is this rivet here was very loose. So I just took a hammer and I hammered it down a little tighter. So it shouldn't rattle. Should be a lot better now. Okay, so I reinstalled it back in the door. Nothing special about that, just reversed it. I did use the old screws because I realized all the nice screws I bought from McMaster are out in the truck and they're pouring rain, so I'm not going to go out there and get them. So, mechanism works perfectly, locks, and most of the rattle is gone. I like the handle a little rattle, but that's because it's not fast. Once fastened on there with the, uh, the spring-loaded uh, backing, it'll it'll be fine. So I got rid of a lot of the rattle and got it all greased up and lubricated and working perfectly. Okay, here we are back again uh, a couple hours later. I'm going to now install the window regulator. Again, a little bit of grease does no good, does does no harm. So we grease it up just a little bit. This is a brand new regulator because the regulator that was in there was uh, basically broken. Um, it worked, but had a lot of loose play and was just not was just not what I wanted. So I bought a new regulator. Grease on the regulator, and I'm going to install it in here. Okay, regulator in there. I supplied screws. You notice I actually did replace all the screws. Rain finally stopped. I went out to the truck and got the uh, the screws I bought at McMaster. A little bit of Loctite to keep it together. Okay, just four screws, and that's it. Okay, next step I'm going to put on the bottom channel on the new glass. So I've got a, a brand new window I'm going to put in. My original windows were cracked. So I'm going to put this strip in the channel here. matter of just pulling it in and seating it in. Okay, note on this, glass is going to go in this way, matching the curve of the door, 
and this rail on the bottom, these connectors are not centered. So you can see the connectors are towards one side. That side's going to go up. Now to get this held in there solid, I'm going to use a heat gun to heat up the rubber in there, melt it a little bit so that it actually clings to the glass. Okay, now we set that aside and let it cool. Now we come to the real challenging part. Got the vent window, I already installed new glass, installed new rubber. It's ready to go. On the end here, I made sure that this was nice, nicely greased up so that the window will move smoothly. And it's ready to be installed. Notice there are several places, I think three holes, where it will be screwed in to the frame. But I'm not going to drill those holes just yet. This is like a uh, putting together a jigsaw puzzle. So the pieces all have to fit together. Putting the window in is pretty simple. You just slide, slide it in. But now aligning it properly with the divider bar and the main window is going to be the challenge. So I had a little trouble getting the divider bar out because they used a nut and a bolt and a nut inside and reaching inside there with a wrench was really challenging. So I'm using speed nuts and quarter inch machine screws. And that will make it a little bit easier to install this. Okay, so we got the divider bar through. So, the divider bar again is going to connect in here and down here. I'm actually going to I'm going to bend this part out and slide this in behind it. Okay, so here lies the challenge. We know this is the divider bar right here. 
is not parallel with the window. Divider bar is lined up. It's screwed down on, on this end over here. It's not screwed down on, on the other end, on this end here. But the window doesn't line up. So that means we have to take this whole window and shift it like this. You notice also there's a gap here. So that has to be fixed as well. So there's some shifting to do in the window. That's why I didn't uh, screw down the window when I put it in. So after much tweaking and playing and about 20 minutes of work here, I've got this gap sealed up. A little bit of gap still around there, but I can fix that with a little bit of rubber cement. So I had to adjust the divider bar down at the other end. And now it's screwed in here and screwed in down at the other end. So now I've got the divider bar and the vent window lined up. So they're going to close properly. There's three screws holding the vent window in. One, two, and three. So I'm, I'm going to drill holes out. And then I'm going to put some Phillips head screws in there. And then we're going to be set to move on to the next step. Okay, got two more of those to do. I'm going to continue working on the door outside here. The weather's cleared up a bit. I've got the door right here with me on a stand. As you can see the truck in the background. It's a little hazy day. I hope we get enough light, but uh, I'm going to continue working outside. So since I last worked on this, I spent a little bit more time on this vent window, getting it to fit nice and snug up against the divider bar. And the way I had to do that is uh, the inner frame here was actually just slightly bent. So uh, I put a clamp across it like this to bend it in. Part of it nice and tight. Now it's nice and tight in the window. I need to do a little trimming on the, on the inside of it. But uh, it's now screwed in. It's nice and tight up against the divider bar. And uh, we're ready to move to the next step, which will be to install the track here and then get the window in. So the window is the toughest part. So uh, I figured out how to do the window on the other door. I'm gonna see if I can duplicate it on this one and see if it works. Okay, so here is the rubber channel that goes around the door. There is this bracket right here on it and it actually notches in right here, just right around here. So you need to make sure you notch this in this channel on the other one was just a hair too long, probably made that way on purpose. So the first thing you have to do is get it in there and measure. So it gets slid in here. And there it is, it's in that notch. Pull it in like this, nice and tight. You see, it is a bit long. So I'm gonna mark that and cut that down. And also on the inside here, which I can't really get on camera, there's a track there also, and it's just a hair too long on that track. So I'm gonna mark both ends, cut it down, and be back in a minute. There's three spots on here where this rubber gets uh, screwed into the door frame. I'm gonna mark them so I know where they are. But there's one right here. There's one all the way up here. And then there's one just down a little farther. I'm going to mark them so I can get them in there. 
Okay, so now for the real challenging part. I've got the door glass here. I've got it on here nice and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. I get it inside the door and get it into the tracks. And that's a big challenge. To get it inside the door, you have to go through the door frame up here sideways. Get it down into the door and rotate it 90 degrees. In there now I have to raise the uh, red registry okay all the way up and rotate the glass rotate it now I'm going to take the divider bar out of the way for now that first I'm going to get it into the channel over on this side so the door has to go part way up into the opening to get into this channel right here Okay, so it's in the channel on that side. Here's the challenge, getting into the channel on both sides at the same time. That was much easier than the last one. Much easier. So now I'm gonna screw the divider back in and, uh, and see if I can get it to connect to the, connect to the, to the, uh, the mechanism. up on the uh, latch. Okay, just got to drop it in, drop it in here, and put it on the cotter pens. Okay, that's my next step. Uh, I don't think we need to watch that. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, a few more things I want to do to cut down on the noise 
that this door makes. Uh, this is just regular insulation that you would put around, uh, you know, ductwork and so forth. It's sticky on one side, aluminum on the other. And putting that, I already painted the inside of this with 415 so that it won't rust on us. It's pretty rusty already, so I scraped that off and uh, and then put the uh, 415 on. And now I'm just going to put this on. And that will help a bit with the noise. And then the second thing I'm going to do is just take good old weather stripping from Home Depot. I'm going to put it over here between all the screws so that it'll line up right on here. This is not precision work. That's on there, and then we just screw it down. I think that'll be taken care of when I put the handle back on. I want to buff it out first, clean it up a bit. So that's the assembly of the, the door. Uh, I still need to screw in the, uh, the channel the door runs in, and I still need to put on the um, anti-rattle strips. And uh, then she'll be ready to put back on. Okay, so now I'm going to do the installation of the rattle strips. I've got everything set up on my little portable workbench outside. Uh, first thing I did was I took the panel off the door, took the cotter pins out, and dropped the window down. Give me a little bit of room to work up here in this area so I'm not cramped in there by the window. There's two rattle strips. They are different. This rattle strip here is going to go on the outside of the door. And this rattle strip with a bend in it right here is going to go on the inside where the bend is here for the uh, where the bend is here for the um, the hand hand grip okay so that's the setup and notice the rattle strip is just a bit long it doesn't quite make it in there and it also is not cut at an angle so the first thing I'm going to do is mark it and cut it let me pause the video, do that, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so the rattle strip is cut. I realized I didn't show you what I used to cut it. Use my trusty Dremel tool. There it is. Use the Dremel tool with this heavy-duty cutoff disc. These things work great. I actually use them to cut out some panels for, for rust repairs. So it really works great. So I just cut that off using the Dremel tool. Then I put it back in place and uh, marked off the locations of all the holes where the clips go. These don't need to be precise as the clips actually will slide a little bit even after they're installed. I also have this piece of wood here that I just drilled a hole in so the clips will fit in there snugly, just tight enough to hold them so they won't move around. And uh, I'll use that and what I'll do is I'll just put the clip in here like that. hammer it down. I'm going to need two hands to do this, so again I'm going to put this down. The reason I'm hammering it down instead of bending it with the pliers, here I am holding on with a pair of pliers. You notice the teeth are directly above the pin that goes in. I really, 
as you notice, I bent the pin on this one. I tried to put it on with pliers. Uh, that just doesn't work. So I found it best to just hammer it on into this piece of wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, at the locations that I've marked. And I'll be back with you in a minute. So I've started installing these. I uh, clipped in the first one way over here on the end. And then just went down and clipped them. They do slide around a little bit if you just grab them with a pair of pliers and move them. Uh, so if they're not lined up with the hole perfectly, that's okay. And then what I do is I just take my pliers like this, press it in. That's all there is to it. And that's how you install the rattle strips. Gonna do the other one now, and I'll take a picture when I'm done. And there we go, the door is completed. Handles are back on. Uh, the only thing is to put the screws in for the uh, strip around the top. You can see the markings with the masking tape, but I'll get to that. I just uh, ran out of screws. I'll run over to Home Depot, get some more. Nothing to it.